When you make a film, you, you never know how it's going to go. I just kept hearing about it and hearing about it. Now it's become sort of this cult classic film. You know, I've had some people, you know, say hello to me on the street. How's it going, Mr. Wick? Yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. John Wick 1 had a very tortured life. We didn't know if the audience would embrace the aesthetic of the movie. Baba Yaga. And it was kind of miraculous that we were able to pull it off. We were really fortunate that people liked what we did. It had its own vibe to it. The action was really cool. The comedy was spot on. Noise complaint. Noise complaint. It was just a really cool, fun movie. It was a great script. The directors did a really amazing job in bringing the tone and bringing the worlds to life. Room 818. Uh, you know, we wanted to do something different, and we wanted to make bold choices and be provocative. I guess we just never thought it would resonate past the genre movie. <laughs> I think the whole world just sort of embraced Keanu being back. You look good. I'm hearing about him, people saying, you have to watch it, you have to see Keanu in this film. Cast the man, cast the man, cast the man. And I think Keanu Reeves, he's very much like John Wick, he's very dedicated, he's a man of precision and, and stick to itiveness and Keanu's got his own code as well. He's sort of the good guy of the bad guys. And the way Keanu does them is unbelievable. It's a very simple, understated performance. We never would have thought we would be making John Wick 2. After the first John Wick came out and it had its success, seems like the best thing to do. When I got the opportunity to read the script and talk with Chad, I knew I need to be in John Wick 2. You working? Yeah. You? Yeah. We called this movie John Wick Chapter 2. It's not two years later. It's the same week. It is Chapter 2. And so we kind of sustain a lot of the same emotionality that we did in the first movie. How good to see you again so soon, Mr. Week. It's been fun to come up with the story for the film, to figure out what could that be. Exploring the mythology, we're kind of continuing it, we're going deeper into it. How do you give them a mixture of the world that they know and they like, and give them a little bit more about that world that they already know, and then add to the top of that an expanded world with more characters? What could it be for this character? Like, what would bring him back? Well, you can't kill another dog. We don't want to do that. How do you give them an emotional way into this movie without repeating ourselves? What brought you back, John? A marker. What we're talking about in this story is the rules of the underworld, the rules that you have to obey, the rules that you have to live by. You came to me. I helped you. If you don't do this, you know the consequences. The past of John Wick comes knocking on his door, and the consequences of John's choices keep ripping away the world. One of the things that tickled me was the idea that we take everything away. We want John Wick to suffer. I love it when he suffers. The end of this story John has nothing, and he's hunted. He's hunted by every level of the John Wick world. John needs to do one last job, and in turn sets the world upon him. But it's only the second chapter. And like any good book, it's got a third. I'll kill them. I'll kill them all.